This is the finished product of what we're making today. Two foot by four foot acoustic panels. Check the description below for a link that goes to my blog where I've got this video, but I've also got an article with written instructions, diagrams, and materials lists. So it should make it easier for you to follow along. So the first step is to make the frame of your panels. Here's a diagram of the cuts we're going to be making on each piece of wood. They're standard 1x4s that you can find in any lumber store, and they're each 8 feet long. Our sides are, the long sides are 4 feet long, and the short sides are 2 feet long. So it's going to take two pieces. The first one you're just going to cut into 4 foot lengths, so straight down the middle. And the second one you're going to cut two 2 foot lengths. You're also going to need a third 2 foot length for our back support piece. So now that these are all measured out, it's time to cut them all. First I start with a standard cut, get a 90 degree angle, and once I've got that, I'm, you can see I'm blocking the saw a little bit, but I've got the miter saw on a 45 degree angle and I'm cutting out the 45 degree miters so that at the corners will line up nicely. So here you can see where the corner is. Now I'm just going to file off the wood shavings here because our cut isn't super clean, so just a quick file and it'll get cleaned up. This is just kind of a funny random screw I saw, it has no thread on it. It came in the package. Now in the corners I've got 3 quarter inch shelving braces, some half inch screws, and some wood glue. Now we're back inside and we're going to assemble the frames. Wood glue each side of it and then get that together and then you're going to take your corner brace and you're going to put it in the corner. I just kind of eyeballed about halfway through and then you're going to drill it in. And now all you have to do is repeat that for all four sides. It's pretty simple. Making sure to glue each one down just to give some extra support. That wood glue is pretty tough stuff but combined with the corner brace we've got a pretty strong joint. So here I've already pre-cut the fabric, and this is just actually a king size bed sheet from Walmart that I've cut out to be a bit oversized so that we can wrap it all the way around. One thing to note here is that you want to make sure to cut your cloth long enough that you can wrap around to the inside of the frame, because otherwise you're going to have an edge that sticks up and that's just not going to be easy to work with. So what I'm doing here is I start by stapling, I'm just using a staple gun to staple these in and I start by stapling one side, and then I go and staple the opposite side, working from the center outwards. Makes it so you don't have any creases or wrinkles in your end product. And you wanna make sure to tension it as tight as you can possibly get it, so that your front is gonna be tight. The corners are a bit awkward. I just kinda of folded it over somewhat nicely and then added in a bunch of staples to hold everything down. I don't have any great method for this, but if you just find something that works and put a bunch of staples in there, it'll get you pretty nicely. And afterwards you can trim off any excess material just with a pair of scissors as you can see right here. So now I didn't actually take video of this while I was recording it, but I put the insulation in, on the inside. The one I got is Roxol Safe and Sound, so it's meant for fire and acoustic treatment. There's something similar of a similar brand name in just about any store and it's not hard to find. I cut an extra piece to add some extra support and something to mount the panel from. It's just, again, our standard 1x4, and then I just cut out some old cardboard I had lying around, enough to cover the entire frame. To attach the cardboard, I've just stapled it, and to attach the 1x4, I've used some screws. Now, one important thing about the screws here is that you have to make sure to pre-jill your holes beforehand. So the last step is to hang it on the wall. I didn't take a video of me finding the studs and drilling them in, I forgot to, 
but I'll put a link to a video that shows you how to find studs and drill into them in the description below. The great thing about this design is that because the support piece covers the entire width of the panel, you can place the panel on the hooks in multiple different positions so you can slide it one way or another depending on the arrangement of your studs and the arrangement of your room. And really simple, that's it. Panels are completely done. So you're going to do this for all nor however many panels you need and then they're ready to go. They actually work pretty well. There's two of them on that wall, and that's the side wall of my studio. And they actually work pretty nicely. If you go up close to them, it's really dead. And they definitely reduce a lot of the unwanted echoes in the room. And then here's my other two, which I've got on the front wall facing me. A nice, simple, single-day project, and you can get four full panels made.